true Praying for our youth Heaven bent Supporting one another A living faith Is what this life promotes Committed to press on Reaching life Forgiving one another While staying on our knees For it's God we aim to please We are declared Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday. It's Latisha from Arizona, and I am your hostess today. Thank you for joining us here on Declare Victory. We're a prayer call that meets Monday through Saturday, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you with your walk with Christ. Please feel free to invite a friend so they can be blessed too. Thank you for joining us daily in April, as the new themes will be both on the mercy and grace of the Lord. You do not want to miss the teachings, lessons, and the messages that the declarers are preparing as they hear from the Lord for his people. We have no announcements today, but we do have two prayer requests. The first one is from Sister Gloria Borganius Hicks. And we need to pray for Dee Felder's dad. He did have a fall, and he is currently in ICU. Can I ask somebody to mute their phone? Hello, hello. hello. Are you just joining us? The music is supposed to be on, Letitia. You can continue. Got it. Thank you. Sorry about that. The second prayer request is from Sister Susie, and she's having an MRI this morning. She wants to pray that all goes well with that. The order of the call today is the declaration will be done by Brother David Water. Praying and leading us in corporate praise will be done by Miss Barbara. Then we'll go back into closing comments that will be hosted by the declarer, Brother David Water. Again, the order of the call today is the declaration will be done by Brother David Water. Praying and leading us in corporate praise will be done by this Barbara. Then we'll go right into closing comments hosted by the declarer, Brother David Ward. At this time, I ask that you put your phones on mute until you're instructed to come off. I now pass the call to the declarer for the day, which is Brother David Ward. Thank you again for joining us. This is Leticia from Arizona. Have a blessed day. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Leticia from Arizona. Thank you for hosting this morning, and thank you, everyone, for joining us, and happy morning, and good morning, and God morning, and we're going to have a good old happy April. We're in April now. Today is April 1st, which is pretty cool. Don't worry, I'm not going to play any pranks on you. It's just the first. It's not a big deal. Um, so I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for your greatness and your glory and thanking you for your grace right now, Lord God. And we ask, Lord, that the words that come from my mouth, Lord, just help your people, heal them, encourage them, and empower them today, Lord God, and help us all on our walk, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So this month we're talking about uh, grace and mercy. Now, when I think about the topic of grace, um, there's one person that really comes to mind, you know, other than Jesus, obviously, and I leave out my namesake, David, because, you know, he's pretty awesome, but uh, it's Paul. It's Paul. Paul comes to mind. Um, You see, Paul was once known as Saul, and he was part of the, the structure that was built up to tear down the early Christian church. Um, after Jesus' ascension into heaven, the apostles that walked with Jesus on this earth, they went out preaching the gospel, and they went out, you know, bringing more people to Christ and bringing more people to Christ's teachings, which were love and faith, ultimately. Um, And the Pharisees at the time didn't like that much, and so they were basically working to tear down that church, that movement, that, you know, Peter was going out and preaching, you know, there was many apostles preaching, and Saul was one of the um, people tasked 
with actually basically hunting down members of the early church, people that were being um, converted to Christianity. And so, you know, and I I say this because I, I know that we all have experience with the story of Paul, you know, once Saul turned into Paul, and we all know about the, the trip to Damascus and how Paul was uh, blinded by a bright light and arrested by the Spirit of God for three days and three nights where he couldn't see and wouldn't sleep and couldn't eat. Um, and Jesus was just working on him and kind of talking with him and giving him the the great commission and ultimately giving him his destiny. But I just wanted to give you some background about Paul because I think it's important because oftentimes there's aspects of what he went through and what he did here on this earth in building and continuing the work to build Christ church that we forget. I know um, in my life group that I've got, that, I, that I'm working with, or that I'm a part of, <laughs> rather, um, with Moses and a few others um, that are on the call, th- there was a member of the life group that mentioned that you know, Paul was truly blessed because he walked with Jesus. And I wanted to correct him and say, well, no, Paul didn't. He was more, you know, he came after Jesus went up to heaven. And that was more Peter. But, you know, I don't like to get into debates because I'm still relearning the Bible. I'm still seeing it through new eyes, through, you know, with new guidance from God. And so we, you know, I also usually will just pray that God, you know, brings enlightenment and guidance into those kinds of conversations where there's slight misunderstanding. But through discussion, we kind of came to understand that uh, what she was meaning and that we agreed was that Paul actually spent time with Jesus in the ascended form and that Jesus guided him and filled him with the Holy Spirit, which Jesus left for us to be our advocate, our our guide. Um, The Spirit allowed Paul to walk boldly for the rest of his time on earth, preaching the gospel of Jesus. And that Spirit made Paul's ministry very powerful and gave him the ability to heal the sick and raise the dead and do anything in Jesus' name. I mean, though he suffered greatly, um, it was still that spirit that was in him that, you know, I wouldn't say more or less than me of the other living apostles of the time, but I would say that he definitely had a special hand on him and his purpose was divinely uh, exposed through the spirit that was living in him through the time that he was able to spend with Christ post-ascension. Um I say that because when we talk about grace, it makes me think about Paul in the book of Acts. So I want us to please go to Acts in the 20th chapter, and we're going to read a series of verses. It's the 22nd verse, um, chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 22, that I want us to kind of focus in on. Um, and I'm going to we're going to dive in, but I wanted to just give you a little bit of context here um, because Paul, you know, after he had seen the light and uh, spent time with Christ, he was preaching the gospel all over. Um, and on many occasions, you know, he had been arrested, he'd been beaten, he had been stoned at one point. You know, he still kept preaching the gospel. So here we find Paul coming back to the Ephesian elders to basically say what the next leg of his uh, mission is uh, where he's going and that God has decided to send him to Jerusalem. Um, And he's telling these elders um, during what I would say kind of of like a pastor's meeting. Um, So Acts chapter 20, verse 22. This is Paul speaking here. Um, And now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison hardship, and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus gave me, 
the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Amen. So basically what Paul is saying here is that he's going to be sent to places where he knows it's not going to be easy for him. He knows that he's basically been sent on a mission that will wind up putting him in prison through many hardships and possibly even death itself. But because the Spirit compels him to finish the race, to testify to God's good news and his good grace, he's going to go anyway. He's going to go because he has to share what God's grace is. He has to give that to the people as God has divinely spoken to him to do. Now, let's talk about what grace means. I know this is the fun part that everybody loves. Now, turn with me, if you will, in your Merriam-Webster dictionary to grace. And grace is defined as unmerited divine assistance given to humans for the regeneration or sanctification, B, a virtue coming from God, D, a state of sanctification enjoined, enjoyed through divine assistance. Hmm. So what grace is is essentially something that God gives us to give us power to give us regeneration, to give us a recharging, if you will, a recharging in our spirit. Now, we live in a day and age now where everybody pretty much has a smartphone in their phone. So I think I'm, I'm talking to somebody when I'm talking about, when, I, when I'm telling you about you looking at your phone and the charge percentage is that, you know, you're at 50%. You know, now you're not too worried because – it's still early enough in the day, and you know you'll get through it. But let's talk about when your when your battery on your phone says about seven percent or five percent, and you see that little red line. You know what I'm talking about. Now your heart starts beating because you know that you're nowhere near your charger, or you're nowhere where you're gonna be able to charge your phone, and it's still early enough where you still have a lot of stuff you need to do, and you don't know what you're gonna do if your phone dies. Because nowadays that's our lifeline. That's the thing we are texting or checking our Facebook, what have you. But we always rely on that. Now think about grace as that charger. Think about grace as basically our portable battery pack or our solar energy battery pack. You could just set it up in the sun and plug your phone in. But instead of your phone, we're talking about plugging your spirit in. We're talking about charging your spirit and charging that Holy Spirit that God's given us to guide us and be our advocate. We're talking about getting the energy that you need through God's grace to keep giving you that pep in your step that you need to make it through the day to put up with that boss or put up with that aggravating situation or put up with anything whatsoever. That's what God's grace and goodness is for. So what Paul is basically saying is he's going to go through whatever he has to do so he can give God's people their rechargeable solar energy battery pack. <laughs> if you'll forgive me for the solar analogy, I spent a year designing and installing solar systems, so I have a thing for clean energy, so as often as I can, I'll try to slip it in. Um, so let's go on to verse 25 here, uh, where we'll see a little bit more about how important God's grace is and what Paul would do and go through to distribute it to everyone. Verse 25. Now I know that none among you whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. That's powerful. That means Paul is basically saying this is it. This is the last time you see me because this next mission might be it, guys. This is it. We're not, we're not going to be coming back together. Uh, verse 26, therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Now, let's take a second here to just point out uh, what Paul's words are. And they're very specific, and it's interesting here because he's making a declaration to these people, to these elders, to, the, to this pastor meeting, essentially, that he's not guilty of shying away from any part of the Bible. 
Now, as somebody who has been part of a family Bible study for like I think the last five to six years maybe, um, we do a weekly Bible study with my family um, and my family, and we decided a couple years ago, a few years ago now, to start going through the Bible book by book, uh, alternating between the New and Old Testament. Now, I was personally against it because I was more hoping that people would give spirit-led and what have you, similar to this uh, declaration, to the, similar to this call, Declared Victory, which is an amazing outlet and an amazing um, place for us to keep getting fed. But I also take the time to just thank uh, Dion and Moni and the, the founders and people that keep this going. Um, but when my family decided to do the entire Bible, I was kind of against it because there are points in the Bible, in my opinion, at the time, because I have a different opinion about it now, that can be boring, that drags on, that give you lineages, that give you who begat who. There's portions of the Bible that are about certain sacrifices that I didn't see as relevant since we had the ultimate sacrifice in Jesus Christ that cleansed all the sins away, that we didn't have to do certain ritualistic things. We didn't have to ritually ritualistically purify ourselves before going before god anymore going into church essentially um, the temple but as we've been studying it chapter by chapter i've been learning more about god and, and growing more in my walk with god and i'm very appreciative of it now but there's been times when we've studied certain things um that are a little bit uncomfortable for some of us, a little bit not exactly what we want to hear. For an example, um, in Matthew, Jesus is giving a sermon on the mount, and he's talking about marriage and, and how it is a sin to marry a divorced woman, that you're essentially creating adultery by marrying a divorced woman. Whoa, let me tell you, whoa, that's intense stuff. You know, people have in my family, and I know most families have gotten divorced, remarried, come back, you know, what have you. And so essentially, it's a hard thing to have somebody hear from Jesus' own mouth that they're an adulterer for marrying someone who's been divorced. So let me just tell you that the whole Bible is a lot to deal with. There's a lot in there. And what Paul is trying to tell these these elders this during this pastor's meeting is, is he hasn't shied away from any part of it, so he's blameless because he's basically told everyone what sins they would be committing and how to re- repent from them and what they need to do moving forward to keep their walk straight with God. And I think that's so important because we need to not shy away from the uncomfortable parts of the Bible. We need to not shy away from the parts that we think are boring or or, or tedious because in that we see what God's will is fully for us. In that we see what God had his people do before he gave us Jesus and it just gives us more reason to praise him and thank him for that gift that makes our walk so much lighter. It makes our burden so much less. And we need to also be aware of the things that we might be committing as sin so that we can ask for forgiveness and try to correct that sin and move forward so that our walk will always be uh, illuminated um, with God's light. Keep verse 28. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he brought with his own blood. Now, this is pretty dope because it's basically Paul saying, keep watch over yourself. You know, it's important when serving God's people that you take care of them. But before you can take care of them, you need to make sure that you're coming correct. Um, You know, you need to make sure that you are in the right state of mind. So I like to always pray before I do declarations. I always like to just make sure that I'm, Coming from an angle of pure love to preach the same way that Jesus preached, the way that he told us to love God first and love each other. And I think it's important that each of us, as we go out in our ministries and our very daily daily lives, that we make sure that we're checking ourselves a little bit 
before we go step out in whatever role that God has us to do to protect his flock so that we're doing it the right way. You know what I'm saying? And I think um, when we're talking about a flock, we're talking about um, essentially being a shepherd here. And that's what, what Paul is saying here is, you know, the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, so be shepherds of the church of God. Now, we all know what it means to be a shepherd um, and hold the flock. You know, as we know, Jesus told Peter to feed his sheep, um, and I think that's important. Um, we even have another example of a great shepherd in God, the Father, who was the shepherd that we, we read about in Psalms. I know I spoke about it, I think it's last year's, uh, last year about Psalm, um, how the Lord is our shepherd that we shall not want. And what Peter, Peter wants us to, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, um, earlier when Jesus told Peter to feed the sheep, you know, he wants to, Peter to, he's basically saying, you know, feed the sheep. Don't beat the sheep. Don't discipline the sheep. Don't judge the sheep. You know, Jesus also said, you know, he who is without sin will cast the first stone. And I think you'd have to have some serious stones if you're going to defy the living word of God and start passing judgment on anybody. And so what this is saying, you know, going back to what Paul is also talking about here is, you know, keep watch over the flock and kind of bouncing off what Jesus told Peter, feed these sheep and feed them good food. Don't feed them junk food. Don't feed them anything that would destroy or harm them. I mean, I would even go so far as to say maybe it would say something like feed them the the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which we've spoken about, which shines through the truth, which shines through God's goodness and God's grace um, when you eat that, when you eat, you you basically are what you eat. Now, I know personally with myself, I have all kinds of skin problems, eczema, allergies, what have you. And I know sometimes when I eat certain foods, it makes me break out. And so in the same way as sheep of the Lord, we need to make sure what we're eating doesn't cause us to break out spiritually in some sort of manner that will show because it's obvious to people when you're not eating of the spirit, when you're not following God's word because you won't, it will show. They'll see it. They'll be able to see it. Um, Amen. Amen. All right. So let's keep moving on through. Um, I'm going to continue with verse 29. Um, I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arrive and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. This is um, essentially in our walks in our churches, in our ministries, in our congregation, in our groups, in our studies, um, consistently speaking about God and Christ's love, there's always going to be someone who's going to cause uh, disturbance, if you will, somebody who's going to try to shake things up. Um, And this is what Paul is warning about. Like I said earlier, I don't usually get into arguments with people over the Bible because I just pray for God's illumination and intelligence to fall upon the situation, whether it be for my own sake or for the person who's speaking sake. Um, If anything is being wrong, I constantly pray that there be a genuine spirit of truth and revelation brought to the situation. Now, in my own life, I've, I've, I've encountered many, many false prophets, many people that will say, well, oh, the good Lord told me this, the good Lord gave me this word, the good Lord said that this person is evil and to shun this person, or, hey, why don't you come over here and I got something better than Christ's love for you because the Lord told me, or, you know, what have you. There's all kinds of stuff out there that's basically designed to pull people away from Christ and God's love. And essentially uh, what 
God has, you know, given us with the spirit of Jesus and the Ten Commandments are essentially love. It's love. You know, when, like I said earlier, you know, Jesus said the first commandment is love the Lord your God. And the second is love each other. And so I think it's important that when we're listening to people speak and preach that we pray for discernment first and foremost, always pray for clarity. But if they're not talking about God's love and they're not talking about love each other, because Jesus literally is saying in the in Matthew, um, when he's in the Sermon on the Mount, is, you know, turn the other cheek. If somebody smacks you, you're supposed to give them the chance to smack you in the other cheek, you know. So if they're not preaching that kind of love, then maybe it might be somebody trying to pull you away from the path, the likeness that God wants us to follow. Um, and so I think um, – it's important to realize that. And in our own personal experience, in my own personal experience, whenever I get uh, frustrated and realize that I might lead somebody astray with my words, I try to pray. I try to stop and pray. I had a situation earlier this week where I was on a fishing trip and something crazy happened and I flipped out. And then I was like, whoa, 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 let's time out. Let's just pray. Let's just relax. Let's just ask God for guidance. Let's ask God for his help. The situation kind of cleared itself out. You know, the other day I got a phone call where somebody was just acting a nut, and I just started praying, and they just kind of, they kind of just backed down and slowly were like, okay, well, all right, um, well, I'm gonna let you go now. You you have a blessed day. I was just was floored. So I just think you know it's important in our walk that we not be pulled away from God's love by wolves and we make sure that we don't ourselves pull other people away from God's love by our reactions and the way that we act and react to situations. It's important to continue to focus on God's grace, his ability to just change any situation, his power to just make anything and everything better if we let him and if we focus on the word that he's given us, the teachings he's given us, and the Holy Spirit he's given within us to just help be that guy, to be that helper. All right, now, so I'm going to continue on to Verse 32, now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Wow. Wow. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's just jump right in. What what Paul is basically saying is he's giving them, he's committing them, to God's grace. He's committing them to God's grace. And here we don't even really need the dictionary definition because he gives it right here. Grace is something that can build you up and give you an inheritance amongst those who are sanctified. Now, that's pretty powerful stuff because that tells us right there that God's grace is meant to help us in our walk and give make us stronger and healthier and just literally build us up and i think that's something that in and of itself is something to praise god and rejoice for because um it's just amazing and you know the inheritance you know it's it's basically you're receiving or possessing something from the past so god is giving us the inheritance from all of the prophets in the past, from Jesus' life, from all of the saints that have come before, and he's giving us, he's pouring that into us through his grace, you know, so that we can be strong among each other who are sanctified. Um, And then Paul goes on to say something that's pretty interesting here, that he hasn't coveted for anyone's silver or gold or clothing, so he hasn't wanted for any material things on this earth, and I know that's hard not to do right now in this time and age because there's so much going on there's 
21 year old billionaires running around driving Maseratis and there's people that are Instagram famous and there's people that are doing some crazy stuff that's just instantly making them rich and it's easy to look at their lives and say well what did I do wrong oh that person started a podcast and now they've got a 10 movie picture deal or oh that person had a YouTube channel and now they're they're the biggest thing in the whole world they're taking the world by storm what am I doing no no that's not what we need to focus on that's not what we need to do we need to focus on working ourselves for the glory of God and building up his kingdom on earth. And the best way to do that, Paul is saying, is to give. It's better to give. So instead of trying to accumulate that wealth, instead of trying to accumulate such fames that people want, instead of trying to accumulate whatever it is on this earth, we should be giving it away. We should be giving away what what there is. And as Paul himself has done, he's giving the good news of God's grace even at his own demise, even at his own hardship, so that he can help build up other people. And that's what we as Christians need to focus on doing, not tearing each other down, not tearing others down, but just really giving out God's love the way that he wants it to be so that we can really truly build the kingdom of heaven on earth right now while we're living. There's no reason we can't live in perfect harmony right now. We just need to be willing to drop our burdens and drop our eyes, our covetous eyes and our, our greedy hearts at times and just follow God and give, give fully, give regularly, give uncompromisingly, um, even if it hurts us. Um, so I think that's basically what grace is. It, it's building each other up and it's giving God's it part of the grace is giving God's grace and sharing the good news, whether it be giving people Bible verses or preaching to them or just living a life that makes them say, hey, what do you got? I want, I, my battery is a little low. I'm on 5%. I'm in the red. That little electric lightning bolt is blinking. What kind of charger do you have that you got pep in your step? Where's your solar battery charger? <laughs> I need to get me some of that <laughs> so my battery is not run down at the end of the day or even in the middle of the day. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Um, and with that, I hope you all have a beautiful bus day. And I pass the call. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, God, we bless you and we thank you this morning. God, I thank you for the word of God that went forth. I bless you because you are absolutely amazing. And it's because of your grace that we are not consumed. It's because of your mercy that we're not consumed. It's because of your love that we are not consumed. And we're thankful this morning for another opportunity to get this thing called life right. God, we honor you this morning for being not just faithful, but for being constant. We thank you this morning that we have access to the right to the tree of life. We thank you this morning that your grace is absolutely sufficient for us. We didn't deserve it. We cannot earn it. God, it's a gift that was given to us that we would know without a shadow of a doubt that everything is factored into the equation. We thank you, Lord God, that when you designed us, that you are the great architect that you already had in mind, that we would require your grace. We thank you this morning that every single error we've made is considered and factored into grace. We bless you this morning that the errors that we'll make tomorrow and the day after are factored into grace, which is why we have access to new grace and new mercy each and every day. God, we bless you this morning because you always had us in mind. We thank you this morning that you always considered the cost. We thank you this morning that from the foundation of the earth, you had an objective, an agenda, an idea of exactly who we are to be and what we are to strive for. And it's because of your grace that not only do we have action at it. God, we have a fighting chance in and through you. 
We thank you that your grace gives us the power to rest in who you are. We thank you that your grace gives us a mindset, Lord God, to consider that you are our sovereign God. And so this morning, God, we pray for every person under the sound of my voice. I pray, God, for families and for generations and bloodlines and lineage. God, we cast down anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, and we put it under the subjection and apply the blood of Jesus. God, we thank you that our children have access to grace because you hung, bled, and died. We thank you that our grandchildren and our great-great-grandchildren have access to grace. I thank you this morning that we've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread because of your grace. God, this morning, I pray for parishioners and for teachers and leaders and those that are responsible for carrying the good news into the uttermost parts of the earth. God, I pray that we would walk in character and integrity and utmost love. I pray, oh God, that we would be uh, personable and relatable in distributing and disseminating the power of your grace. I pray, oh God, that we would begin to move and operate as if we recognize that we are saved by faith in you, God, that nothing can shake or change the reality that if we believe in you, your grace is sufficient for us. I thank you this morning that even as I pray, God, you're beginning to align our lives with the truth of the word of God, the knowledge of the word of God. I pray this morning that everyone under the sound of my voice will second Timothy two and 15 study to show thyself approve a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God, I thank you this morning, God, that you're restoring marriages. I bless you this morning, God, that you're uh, aligning our children's hearts and minds with the truth of the word of God. I thank you that we'd be example, examples and stellar examples of what the, the love of God actually looks like. I thank you that your love is vicious and vehement and adamant, constant, Lord God, and violent towards us. I thank you that no matter what we do, no matter where we go, that you are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. I thank you, Lord God, that you are made strong in our weakness, that we can acquiesce and we can operate in absolute vulnerability because you're a God that cannot fail. You're a God that cannot lie. You never change your mind, God. You never turn your back, God, that you are always present, God. You said, lo, I will be with you always, even until the ends of the earth. God, I bless you this morning for your word. I bless you, God, that we can depend on the word being uh, alive and quick and sharper than a two-edged sword. So this morning, God, we declare and we decree that we are the righteousness of God. We declare and we decree that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We declare and we decree that we are pulling down anything that exalts itself above the truth of your word. And we thank you, Lord God, that we have access to a new day, a new mercy, a new grace. And today, God will move forward knowing that if you be for us, what is the entire world against us? God, we thank you this morning that you're aligning our thought process with your word. We thank you this morning that our heart is being regulated by the power of the truth of the word of God. We thank you this morning that our walk and our lifestyle will accommodate the truth of your word. We thank you this morning that you're preparing someone, God, to see our walk and to experience Experience our life and to know that you are the way, the truth, and the light. God, I thank you this morning, God, that no matter what we've done times past, we still have action at declaring the work of he who sent us. I thank you this morning that every single person under the sound of my voice is Isaiah 61. We're all anointed to teach and preach and speak the word of God and to live the word of God alive. God, that somebody might see your love. 
that somebody might know your grace, that somebody might experience your mercy, that somebody might even have an opportunity to experience empathy, Lord God, in such a way that they feel your love for your word declares and they will know us by our love. God, teach us to love greater. Teach us to love in such a way, Lord God, that it overtakes and overshadows people who thought that all hope was lost. We thank you that our hope is in you. We thank you that you are our refuge and our strong tower. We bless you, Lord God, that there's safety in you. We thank you that even your shadow has power. We thank you that there's no shadow of turning in thee. We bless you this morning that because we are in Christ, God, that we have access to the Father. And we bless your name, God. We thank you for the indwelling of the power of the Holy Spirit that leads and guides and corrects and shapes and speaks through us, Lord God, and speaks life to dead situations and cancels assignments and breaks curses and changes minds. We thank you this morning, Lord God, that your grace literally is sufficient for us. We thank you this morning for being our provider. We thank you this morning for being our protector. We thank you this morning for being our comforter. We thank you this morning for being our shield and our buckler. We thank you this morning for being the lamb of the tribe of Judah. We thank you this morning that you are our bright and morning star. We bless you this morning that you're Elroy God. No matter where we are, God, you see us. We thank you this morning that because you live on the inside of us, God, you're teaching us how to be better parents, how to be better spouses, how to be better friends, how to be better siblings, God. And we bless you this morning for those that you'll begin to place around us that would hold us accountable to the standard. For when the enemy comes in like a flood, God, you'll lift up a standard against him. God, I thank you, Lord God, for witty ideas and inventions. I thank you today, Lord God, for the preparation, Lord God, that you are placing on the inside of us to go and do great exploits in your name. I thank you this morning that our children are covered and protected, oh God. I bless you this morning that our grandchildren are protected and covered. God, I pray this morning for Dee Dee's father. I pray this morning for Susie as she goes to her MRI. God, I pray for Rick this morning. God, that all is well in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for all of the unspoken prayer requests. God, and I thank you this morning that the enemy has no power, that he has no authority, and we come against every lie of every single enemy in the camp, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that false words will fall on deaf ears as it relates to your children. I thank you, Lord God, that you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Oh God, help us not to fear their faces. Lord God, we'll sit at the table and we'll thank you in advance for making a way, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all things working together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. God, we bless you this morning. And as we begin to take our phones off mute, how Hallelujah. We celebrate you and we say, God, you are our strength. Hallelujah. You are oh, our hope, God. Hallelujah. You are our peace, Jesus. You are our salvation. Hallelujah. You are our strong tower. Hallelujah. God, thank you this morning. That because of your love towards us, Lord, we cannot thank you. Hallelujah. I tell God that everything is in the Lord. From the foundation of your salvation. Hallelujah. He began a great work. Hallelujah. 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 H
Hallelujah, you give us the grace to believe. God, help our unbelief in every area of our life. God, begin to make us again another a vessel in the potter's hand. God, begin to reshape our thinking. Hallelujah, renew our minds today, Lord God. Hallelujah, renew our minds today, Lord God. God, embrace the power of your grace, God. We trust you. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you. That God, what you began on the inside of us, you shall perform the day of Christ Jesus. We bless you and we give you honor. We give you glory and we thank you in advance, God, for doing a new thing. God, we thank you that because of your mercies, we are not consumed. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are working all things together. Hallelujah. And we ask, oh God, that this day you would continue to keep us, continue to move in and through us, continue to make us over, God. Continue to make us over, continue to regulate our minds that we will be able to embrace the power of your love, the power of your mercy, the power of your kindness, the power of how much you love us without us doing a thing. God, that no matter what happens, as long as we believe you, your grace is abounding. So, God, we ask that today as we go throughout our workday, our experience, that somebody might experience the power of your grace that rests on us. And that somebody would see the love of Jesus deep down on the inside of us as we begin to move forward in what you called us to do so that you would get the glory out of our lives. This we ask. In your darling son, Jesus' name of the Father, amen. And God, we bless you as I pass the call back to the declarer. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Dion. That was amazing. Amen. Oof. All right. So I'm going to open it up to the floor, if you will. Um, basically, just to give you a quick recap of what um, – I spoke about um, I was speaking about Paul um, and his his last meeting with the elders at the Ephesians and how he basically was telling them that he was going to go preach in Jerusalem about God's grace and teach people about 
how God gives us grace, and we talked about what grace means, which grace is a gift from God that kind of is made to restore us and build us up um, and restore our spirit uh, so that we can, can continue doing the work that he has us to do. And Paul also talked about being aware of wolves that would pull us away from God's grace and pull us out of God's walks and try to destroy us. Um, and so we just talked about basically always seeking God through his word and through prayer and following in that grace no matter what and how Paul was willing to do that to the potential of imprisonment and hardships that he would encounter. And as he said, he acts further, you'll find that he did definitely encounter quite a bit of hardships in uh, Jerusalem and then in Rome, um, being in prison for a number of years. So I'm just going to open it up to the floor. Does anyone who want to speak about grace or just anything in general um, related to your walk with Christ? All right, um, since it sounds like there's no one that has anything else they want to add, um, I'm going to ask if there's any prayer requests, and we can kind of maybe wind down and close out. Good morning, David. It's Didi. I'm amazing. Um, share this morning. Oh, my God, the top Good morning, of you. this month. Uh, you are amazing. Your sound is so, oh, I think everybody just kind of like me. I'm just sitting here <laughs> listening, and the prayer was amazing. It's just so much with grace and mercy, and this this month is going to just, I think, be mind-blowing for a lot of us because we really don't deserve it. Like even just the fact that we're here today and we're on this call and we're listening in, and it's just grace and it's new every day and it's new mercies, and it's just, it's just, I'm just overwhelmed right now with God and how amazing he is and and just every, for everything, the good, the bad, the, you know, the not so good right now. Um, my father had an incident. He had a major stroke last year. And so over the weekend he fell, hit his head. And so he's back in the hospital with a bleed. And he's way in North Carolina. So the distance is harder than anything. But I trust God for that. And also a very, very dear sister as we speak. She's having a double mastectomy. Um, but I, I trust God for that. And it's so many things um, that are that are going on. Just, you know, every time I turn around, it's either a sickness, it's a death, or it's something but God, but God. So I, I'm learning not to um, not to get weary, I mean, because it, it's rough, all the cares of life. But when I think about his grace and his mercy, I know something about God's grace. And there's nothing I could do but just trust God for everything. So I just want to just tell you i i really love you i'm grateful for you being a vital part of this call but this morning your sound nephew david it just did something to me so i just love you for that and thank you for your amazing share have a wonderful day thank you auntie i love you too and definitely will be praying for your father and definitely know that god will work his miracles and and uh helping to heal him and bring him back to full health. Um, thank you for um, sharing. And, yeah, and I think, uh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, David. This is Catherine. How are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm blessed, um, especially here more and more of what God uh, is helping me with. Um, Grace. Grace, wow, you did a wonderful job on the decoration this morning. Um, I'd just like to, you know, let things speak in this mind and heart because um, God is, as he given me a new mind, you know, it is revealing more of his grace of what he, his grace for me, you know, and I, I'm just so grateful and thankful that, 
he is who he is. Because, you know, you think like, wow, I didn't think of that as being something, you know, that was ugly or, you know, something that was bad or whatever. But how his grace covered me, you know, his grace is is, is um, pulling those things off me and um, out of my mind and out of my spirit, you know. So I'm so grateful for his grace on today. You know how he's revealing things to me and helping me to ask for forgiveness for things that I did not see as needed to be asked for for forgiveness, you know, and and it was through his grace that kept me. And I'm so grateful for that. And great declaration this morning. Um, I moved around them at work when I uh, took down some notes and, and things like that. So I appreciate your declaration this morning. It was something um, you said, you said working on ourselves to the glory of God, you know, like, giving away God's love, you know. So I said, Lord, help me, help me, you know, so we can help build your kingdom, you know. And he's been doing that, but more, you know, more, 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 more. I'm hungry to do what God wants me to do for him. So um, learning, I thank God for this line, learning, learning, you know, um, to um, seek him in all things, you know, it is a blessing because it's it be the totally opposite of what you may plan to do or, you know, go or whatever. So I, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for his grace. Thanks for your declaration this morning. Hey Amen. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that it, I love that, that idea of just growing constantly. We're, we're constantly growing, and it, it's because of God's grace that keeps us, that keeps us going. and like you said, you know, as we learn that there's things that we might be doing that is sinful or offensive to God, he still keeps us and we can ask for forgiveness and just move on because of his grace. That's powerful. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I think it's important for us to continue to find ways to serve God because when we serve God, you know, he helps us too. He helps build us up and helps us to achieve what we need to achieve here on earth that he has us to do, has for us to do here. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else that would like to speak um, on grace or have any prayer requests uh, or anything like that? Good morning, oh, David. This is Sabrina. Um, I don't have a hi. I don't have a prayer request, but I wanted to tell you I absolutely enjoyed you this morning. Your energy and your animation, like I was tickled when you said Amen. Like I screamed Amen, but then you turned around and said Amen. We're moving on. Like that blessed me so. So you have absolutely started my week off um, t- greatly. I have joy just listening to you this morning. So I don't have a prayer request, but I am praying that your week will be fantastic, sir. Hey, man, thank you, Sabrina. I appreciate that, and I hope that your week is awesome as well. Thank you so much. And, yeah, it's fun. I like to have fun, so <laughs> thank you. Is there hey, anyone... Man. Yep. Hey, this is this is Captain Back. Um, prayer is always needed. Um, can you please pray for the Burchett family? It's my um, bloodline. Okay. Burchett. Burchett. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Is there anything specific for the Burchett family? Oh, they to grow closer, walk with God, and um be able to be an acceptance of of God's will. Okay. Amen. All right, we will be in prayer. Thank you so much.
All right, is there any other prayer requests or, you know, I can, it's open to if you want to discuss if there is anything specific that you want to um, talk more about um, from today's declaration about grace and about Paul's willingness to go out and spread the news of God's grace no matter what um, and how we should always be looking for opportunities to give God's gift of grace. All right, well, if there's no one else, um, I've been taking some yodeling classes, so I just want to share a little bit of yodeling with you guys before I close this out in prayer. April Fools, sorry, I said I wasn't going to do it. But I'm a <laughs> you are hilarious. <laughs> go ahead and yodel. Yodeling, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all right, sorry, I couldn't help myself. It, it is April 1st after all. But um, all right, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and close this out unless somebody else has anything else. All right, amen. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for your grace, thanking you for your unlimited grace, for always giving us a chance to serve you again, Lord God, and always giving us that power, Lord God. We pray right now for Aunt Didi's father right now that you will restore him and heal him up, Lord God, while he's in the hospital recovering from his stroke and his head. Um, injury, Lord God. We also pray for her sisters respectively, Lord God, that you'll just guide the doctor's hands and lead them to do what needs to be done so that it will be a quick and easy procedure, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for just showing us your grace and giving us your help. And in that, we ask, Lord God, that the Burkett family just come to find you closer, that you just show yourself to them so that they can come to a closer walk with them, Lord God, as you showed yourself to Paul on his road to Damascus and changed his life around, which ultimately changed all of our lives around by giving us that good news and giving us the lesson of your grace, that you'll do the same for that family, Lord God. We know that you can. We know that you will. We ask that this week, as everyone goes through their weeks and their various workplaces and whatever they have to do today, that you'll just be with them and continue to remind them of your grace and that you always have them covered, Lord God. And we thank you for your blessings. And we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I love you all. Have a wonderful week. Love you too. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. God bless you. Love you too. Thank you. I like to love my God bless you all. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day. All right. Take care. You guys. Love you.
Hope, walking in the truth, praying.